the mind's potential lies beyond the realm of thought. Welcome to the Being Now podcast. This is episode six, and on this episode, we're going to be covering the topic of non-dual consciousness. So, Sean, if you want to go ahead and kick us off, what is non-dual consciousness to you, your understanding of it? Is it something that you feel you've experienced, or is it something you think is Something that you've only kind of thought of, I guess, is a good, well, a good question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I would have to say that the shift of, I, I can place it in time, which would be the week before we started the show, but giving it a name was non-Taoism, uh, essentially, because what non-dualism or non-dual consciousness or non-dual awareness, ha- however you want to phrase it, the 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 common denominator of all of those things is that you are seeing reality for what it is and that there is a base reality and i know for myself i had gone quite far from that because it's almost easier to to speak about what it's not because you find that every time you've put yourself into a situation or created a need or said, I want, that's really taken you out of just being, which is essentially when you're in a non-dualistic consciousness, you just simply see things for what they are. And, um, I feel like this would also be a good time to bring up the the concept of uh, you're not a drop in the ocean, you're the ocean in a drop, because really that's that's saying that you have inside of you everything that you need, which on a on a level that we're talking about is is really is true. Um, but one of the things I did in preparation for this episode was I made a a Reddit thread for people to. Uh, give, give their own explanation because if you if you Google non-dual consciousness, one of the definitions literally is that it's a fuzzy concept. And with that in mind, I wanted to get a couple different ways to kind of verb it. So um, I'll, I'll just go ahead with the first one. Um, well, the first one that I saw was uh, the dual consciousness is one point in which there an, there is an observer and an observed. The peculiar ability to be able to observe one part of one consciousness with another part, think, and it's separate from that part. The non-dual consciousness is one in which an observation takes place such that there is an insight into nature and structure of this division. And I, I'll just kind of give that a moment to marinate in, in your mind for a little bit, but uh, essentially what that means to me is, and I think this is very important, is that you don't simply arrive at non-dual consciousness. There's there's almost like a linear progression that has to take place. And it's that you almost have to go through the uh, the dual consciousness, which I, th- I, I know for myself the, the way that, and this is why we came to this topic after ego death because it's not until you experience ego death and a true separation from your individual individuality and the connection of all that there is through unity that you are even aware that there could be a separation. (laughs) And I know that you and I had talked a lot about, well, not a lot, but we had, definitely mentioned um, there there was something that you see a lot in spirituality groups where when they, they experience ego death, excuse me, I need some water that when they experience ego death, 
they they tend to uh, look down on or think bad of the ego. And do, do you remember us talking about that a little bit? Yeah, I, I, I do. And I remember kind of what, what came out of that was how important it is because without the ego, it's, enlightenment It's the thing that led be, you there, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And and so that's why for me that that progression is very important. And I also think that it's linear, which is weird because non-dual would be that it's not. And that's probably one of the tricky parts about it, at least for the way that I came into it, because um, being able to w- one of the other con- concepts I have about duality is that everything is this or that, and that things just naturally have polar opposites. And that's not really the case with non-dual consciousness because things just simply are. And um, there, there's a lot of different, stages you can go through within non-dual consciousness. But I I know for myself, where I'm at right now is simply when I think of mentally who I am or who am I, that that question is just answered by I am myself. And there's no, there's no attachment. There's no identity associated with any of that. It's simply, you know, um, I am, this person and that's it. And uh, one of the things that he, this guy goes on in his uh, explanation of that definition is that uh, he says, there is no peak moment. There is no time. The dual mind creates time itself. And and I definitely think there's truth in that because um, the, the progression of moment to moment and thinking, gosh, this is taking a while or things like that is, Definitely uh, something when you start stepping away from non-dual consciousness. But he also says that the dual mind focuses. And I think that's pretty important, too, because uh, what we seem to come to in non-dual consciousness is that we have an awareness. And that awareness is basically what we can consider of our environment in any given point. And that's what we pay attention to. And... I know that for myself, when I have a strong sense of being present in the moment, which is essentially what this whole podcast was predicated on, um, my my awareness reflects my my immediate surroundings. Like uh, sitting here in this room, um, you know, I, I'm not considering the the floor above me. I'm not considering the the other side of the world. I, I'm not even considering uh, you know anything outside, and it's it's a very complicated thing to talk about because this is all just just <laughs> yeah. a piece of it but it's you can almost go any direction you want to at this but and that's why I, I like to keep it in the vein of uh, what what's actually applicable and what makes sense with where you are now and I'm pretty good with that so I I hope that was a good explanation. Yeah, that was honestly kind of blew my mind a little bit, kind of mind fucked me. <laughs> there's a lot. There, there, there's a lot within the last, you know, seven, eight minutes that you just shared. There's a lot to digest in that. And <clears throat> one well, thing we can pick that it apart I, if you want, or... oh yeah, um, there's. I mean, we can go in so many directions with this. I'm really excited. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one one thing that I did think would be really important to mention, because I know we didn't mention this on our last episode um, with with the ego death. Like I, I remember I mentioned that non-dual consciousness is a fruit from ego death, right? But it's not like once you experience ego death, it's not like you immediately just fall into this non-dual consciousness conclusion, right? It's something like... The ego death you go allows the you to be, first. yeah, the, the ego death allows you to be more open and it allows you to go into this direction, but there's still an immense amount, Im- immense amount of work to be done. Like I, I don't know if I could ever say, or I don't know if I can say right now that I've experienced what it, what non-dual consciousness feels like. I, 
I, I, I have a good understanding of, you know, the concept and everything you just shared, you know, it resonates so well. And my intuition is like, yeah, <laughs> that, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I know with feeling, with feeling that and really embodying that philosophy, it, from my understanding, every spiritual teacher I've listened to says that it's, that's what where meditation is really important. That's how you come to that experience to feel it and not just think about it, right? Well, there was a a Facebook group that I frequented until I and I still do sometimes, but um, I, I first experienced ego death like the very first time, maybe when I was like twenty years old. And I'm 32 now, so it's been quite a while from experiencing it until I, I what, whatever I would claim is my non-dual sense of awareness. But in, in any case, um, th this group I was a part, I, I'm a part of, was really great about. I, I would state my whatever my current association was, which would be, you know, I, I, I see myself as such, and and they would give give a pretty accurate representation of where I was along the line. But um, I, I think that, and I'm, I'm not going to talk about politics often, but I really honestly feel like the identity politics that is going on in, in a big way right now, as far as um, associating with something and, and adopting all of its ideologies, I, I, I really honestly feel like that is a, a, a result of people being stuck in that dualistic nature because when you see things for what they are, all of those things fall apart and it, it's things like common sense. And I, dude, I talked to somebody this morning in a discord channel and, and it felt like it was going to go in a good way. And then I said the word common sense and, and they said, what do you mean from that? And, and I said, dude, don't mess with me. Like, you know, what's right from wrong. And he said, do I question mark? And if there's a summation of everything that non-dual consciousness is not, it's that right there because I, I just don't have words to, you, you know, like we know what common sense is and we know right from wrong. And thinking that we don't know those things or I watched a documentary called what is a woman, which is a thing of itself, but take, taking things like that and, and magnifying them to a degree that really makes you question the way you see the world is, I, I think it's really damaging to people. And, and I think, I, I think it's, uh, you know, taking people further away from the truth and, the truth is that there is a baseline unfiltered reality. And one of the concepts that we talk about is, is an awakening. And that's not to say that you're, you're awake, you're waking from something into something different. You're, you're simply shedding off all of the preconceived uh, way that you saw the world in relationship to the way you saw yourself and seeing that you simply just are and things just simply are. And yeah. It's just like removing all of those filters that we've been mm -hmm. putting on, you know, and that were put on us by our domestication from us being a child to going up to, you know, adulthood and being told that we have to do this. We have to do that to be a good son, friend, spouse, student, employee well, you know there was in... there there was something that i came across when like my first or second week into this when you you and i were pretty much talking nonstop every day and uh it, it was the if you could do one thing well why not do all things well right i i feel like that is non-dual consciousness right there is uh you know it's not complicated it's incredibly simple and 
it, it's almost like the more we talk about it, the more of a disservice we would do to the concept of it because it's so simplistic. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's it's it's exactly that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the reason why it gets so complicated and why it's so hard <laughs> to wrap our minds around and to talk about it is because it's not something that the mind can understand really you know our mind can kind of it, it can uh what's the word so a lot of spiritual teachers you know what they say is like i can use words but don't hold attachment to them don't take them so serious it's okay. just waypoints for you to find your way to uh you know baseline reality or the unfiltered reality and then you realize that you know everything that we talk about everything that we say it's it's confusing us more because our brain isn't going to understand it. Once we step out of our brains and allow ourselves to experience it, that's where it's at. You know, so our brain has all of these, these filters and it's just, you can't get away from it. It just is what it is. And if you stop using your brain to try and I, understand a concept that you can't, it's go ahead. Well, I, I think there's two important things that you and I talked about during this transition um, because we had spoken about, the uh, the brain being a problem solver and it, it just wants to solve problems and everything that it does. And, and that's, you know, one of the reasons why uh, someone might have a, a hard time uh, understanding this simple things just are the way they are kind of kind of way of thinking and living because when things just are, there's no need to change it. And, thinking that something should be something different and what we're really talking about are situations or uh, places we find ourselves in life, right? Um, maybe I feel like I should have a better job or maybe I feel like, you know, those I feel like or I want, like it, it, basically anything that is predicated from the word I is not a non-dual way of thinking. Yeah. And yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just agreeing with what you were saying, but. Oh, okay. Well, there was something else that I was going to say too, which is, uh, man, I'm not sure if I can remember it right now, but um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was listening to this. I can't remember the name of the YouTube channel, but he described, and I sent you the link and you actually introduced me to him. But I was yeah. listening to a lot of what he was talking about with no self and mm -hmm. the I am realization. And the I am realization was at first I felt like it was still dualistic. And I know I even mentioned this in the last episode. So I kind of learned a lot in the last week as far as no self and I am. <clears throat> and the way he explained I am, which is what really stuck out to me and shifted my perspective was there's this this deep knowing right when we stop using our mind to wrap our head around these concepts within us our consciousness just has a deep knowing of what we are but if you try and think about what we are it's a thought it's a con it's constructed from yeah. a, an ego or some sort of identity and that's it's the coming part that's from a place. Yeah. And that's the part that's dualistic. But once you step out of that, step out of your mind from trying to understand what you are and you just allow yourself to be, there's that, that, like I said, that deep knowing within you that just knows that you're consciousness and that's the experience. And that's the non-dual consciousness because it sees that within ourselves. And then it sees I, I don't like to you it's having these kinds of conversations is really hard because you know in English language we still have to use the words I you ourselves so anyone listening try not to pay too much attention to those words or hold too much attachment to them because it's the only way we can talk about this but it's it that's still those words are dualistic in themselves so it's hard to use those words when we talk about things like this but so the, um, the thing the thing I was going to say before was the, the reason that uh, th these teachers will tell you not to have an association with like the particulars of, of what's being talked about is because there is 
a very linear progression, which is that you have to go from a strictly dualistic mindset to enter into a non-dualistic consciousness. However, that, and this is the part that's tricky, but it's really not. So I'm going to make it very simple. That shift from dualistic into non-dualistic has to happen, but it's not the same for everybody because the knots that I had to untie are different from the knots that Chris had to untie, which are going to be different from the knots that whoever's listening might have to untie or it, it, any anybody in particular. And that's what is so hard about this is that um, you really have to take away your your sense of identity in, in a sense, because your, your identity along the path of coming to this is really just an attachment to what you think you, you, you are a, about a given situation, because ultimately we simply are. And who, who knows, you know, there's probably people that w would find that very simple and easy to get to. But like I said, my first sense of ego death was at 20 and I were at six weeks ago and I'm 32. So it, it took me a while. Yeah. Um, it's, I don't know. I mean, this, this journey is <laughs> freaking crazy and it's, it's just so like, I'm still trying to sit here and wrap my mind around, you know, some of what you started the, this episode off with and everything is just, now I'm trying to bring my attention back into just being present here with you in this conversation. And well, I'm still trying it's... to go, I'm trying to take off and go further. So, yeah. Cause um, <clears throat> the, the next thing I want to get into is the, what the sense of no self is because I have a very good sense of that as well. Cool. Yeah. Um, I'll, what I'll go ahead and do is I'll give you mine just because I want to kind of, I want to get share mine with you and then I want to hear what you have to say. So that way it okay. might like just completely fuck what I'm about to say all the way up, <laughs> but I'm excited <laughs> for it. I love to learn. So, um, my idea of, or my understanding of no self or anatman or anatta enlightenment, you know, those are all the words for it, I guess, non-dual consciousness is you know first it starts with the ego death like we talked about on the last episode and what we've been talking about in this episode so far so uh, now that we have the identity gone now we're after we experience our ego death now we're like okay so what are we though you know and then we start the journey of trying to figure out what we really are and then that's when we come to the i am realization realizing that we are simply just beings we're consciousness as is everything else and there's you know that that deep knowing once you start to be more open to not using your mind to try and understand everything but you do have to use your mind to a certain degree to get to that realization and then once you get there then you realize that your mind is holding you back from being able to progress further. So then you start to detach from your mind, your physical body, because it's a hindrance, right? And ah, oh, see, this is this is hard. <laughs> but okay, so now we have the I am realization that we're just a being. Everything is being. Everything is consciousness. And then I, I we think start I to can tap help in. You along. Yeah, sure. Um, one sec. So with the with the non dual consciousness, then we start to realize like, all these sounds, these emotions, the feeling of things and this, everything that we perceive from our five senses is, there's no one here. Once we lose, you know, the sense of identity, the sense of self, there's no one here to observe these things, these sounds, these feelings, they are just as they are. And that's the part where I struggle with because I still, you know, feel in a way attached to 
my physical form or whatever. And that's where it's hard for me to bridge that gap between dualistic and non-dualistic because, you know, so, there's a sound. I feel like I hear it, right? So think about it like this. There is always vibration in absolutely everything. And sound is vibration. But vibration isn't sound until it's experienced by consciousness. Fuck. And then <laughs> we, we – so, so hold on. Um, we can take this a step further because I, I feel like the – the thing that you wanted to say um, would have been that once you realize that the it's like right before the the or maybe it's during the the I am but um, what you you were talking about feelings and emotions and thoughts and that is the part where you learn through experiencing because that's when you're present in an experience, you're not reacting. You're simply a part of the experience and mo moments of clarity or realizations are always after the fact they're never during. And I, I feel like that plays into what you're saying. Yeah, definitely. It, it helps a lot. And I'm like still hesitant to even like, you know, even say that because I know I'm using my mind to still wrap my head around this concept and it's, uh, it's so difficult, <laughs> but well, that's why there's... I'm glad we're, that we're doing this and we're talking about this because, you know, they're with what you're saying, I do resonate with and well, there... by me trying to use my mind, it's complicating it. But once I stop, <laughs> you know, it, it makes yeah. it easier. <laughs> well, there's, you know, we had talked about enlightenment and that essentially this would be enlightenment. And I, I, I agree, but I just feel like the flow state is, is something we haven't talked about yet. And so I want to talk about that now. Um, yeah. So there's this thing that happens when you are present in the moment and you're simply uh just i i know that it's much more present with the mindset of and this is the odd part about how you use your mind because it's a sense of awareness which needs to match your environment because i had talked earlier about i'm not you know concerned about places that i'm not at and the way that works out is when your awareness matches your environment, you put yourself in a place where if you, and this is hard to talk about, but essentially I find my, the, the way that I best enter a flow state <clears throat> is when I create and that can be a lot of different ways. It can be through an art form. It can be through expression. It can be through um, my personal favorite, which is uh, something like journaling, but it's not. It can typical... also be like well, physical it, it... exertion as well. Absolutely. And um, I, I know that for myself, when I quote unquote journal, it's not you know, the typical, how did my day go? Or I experienced this. It's, you know, I, I sit down with an intention to, uh, write about a subject. And then I find that I'm typing as fast as the words are coming. And it's almost like I have to wait until all that comes out and, and then stop and, and then realize that was from a flow state. And Flow states are, I almost feel like it's independent of non-dual consciousness because Taoism is ingrained in non-dual consciousness. However, yeah. flow states are a part of Taoism, not necessarily non-dual consciousness. So I, I just feel like that distinction is important because... Well, 
the okay so the thought that i just had that came up and i mean you know tell me how you feel about this this is just kind of just what came to mind so i'm not even sure how i'm gonna feel about it after i say it but here we go Fuck just it. say it so you know when i feel like we, if we're in a flow state it can be tied you know, directly to non-dual consciousness, because when you're in a flow state, like you just said, you don't realize that you're in a flow state until after, and you recognized it as a flow state, because in a flow state, you don't have any of that brain power going on that's creating separateness, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you're just flowing with life. And I feel like you can't do that unless you are experiencing some sort of non-dual consciousness, because you're not anywhere but the present moment with unfiltered reality and you're seeing everything for what it is and <clears throat> so like my experience with non-dual consciousness or i mean i'm sorry with with flow state is like you know when i would have to write papers for school or whatever like an essay i would struggle so much because i was so in my head trying to figure out how i'm going to do it or you know i would get like a paragraph and be like oh my god this sucks I have to restart and I would just get total writer's block. But it got to the point where I'd be like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to give up. And then I just start writing something. And then my hand just kind of starts writing. And then before I know it, I'm just going paragraph after paragraph. And everything's just coming to me all at once. And it, I get the paper done in like an hour. <laughs> you know, it's just absolutely insane. But it's not because I'm sitting there and trying to figure out what I'm going to say next. I'm not worried about anything. I'm just being absolutely present. And that flow is just running right through me because it started with, I'm going to give up, which that, that feeling of I'm going to give up is I'm not attached to this anymore. I don't care anymore. You know, I'm just letting it go. And then letting go, it brings (laughs) flow, you know, letting go of the attachment or the stress or identification you have you know like i was identifying with the paper like i need to turn this in i need to make sure this is good because it's going to be a reflection of my work performance my grades which you know they're grading me on my brain power you know and (laughs) (laughs) letting all of that go and yeah no that's i guess that's been one of my experiences of flow And that's the key thing to take away is that absolutely anything you can do, you can also do in a flow state because, um, you you know, the thing, the individual parts that you talked about, um, what you would want to take away is those are triggers to allow you to shift into a flow state because I I know that for myself, I, I can... I, I can't think mentally I'm going to go into a flow state, but I can mm-hmm. create the conditions where one would be likely. And more often, than, more often than not, that's the result. And um, I, I, I've got some, some tricks that I use m- myself. And uh, one of the ways is I, I have a friend that I've been, uh, helping her with her homework because she just started online college. And one of the things that I'll do is that when we're talking, I'll start putting a cadence, a cadence in my voice. I'll have a, uh, ca- kind of a rhythm where I, you know, uh, change the tone gradually up and down. And I also change the speed at which I talk. And those almost put me into a, uh, it, it seems almost like a trance, but really it's, uh, it's the mindset that I don't want to try to be in a flow state. I just want to kind of dance around the possibility and then allow the shift to happen. And that's a, you know, a very situational type of thing where I'm sitting at my computer and the two of us are, uh, you know, uh, video chatting. And then we're, uh, one of us is sharing a screen and, you know, we're working together on something. And, and so that's a very specific kind of, kind of thing, but there are many ways in which pieces of that could be applied to other situations and exactly what you're talking about as well. And, you know, we're both pretty new at this. So 
this is probably the best time to talk about it because I, I feel like once we're further down the line, it, it's just not going to make sense anymore. <clears throat> so, which is, you would think is odd, but really I think that's probably a pretty good assessment of what's going to happen because when you listen to these teachers, they, they, they can't really talk about it the way that we are. And I think that's a, probably an indication that that's what's going to happen if we continue down this line of thinking. And we had spoken before about uh, what would be next after the I am stage of awareness. Oh, that's okay. So scratch that I am thing. Okay. What I wanted to speak of was the, the no self. And so my explanation of explanation of no self is what you come down to is the no self is not it's not the way that it sounds. It's not like you're not a person. It's not like you're not there, but rather all that you like, not even all that you are just the, the piece of you that's alive, that ex simply exists all the time, regardless of your mental state, regardless of where you think you are, regardless of I I any thought, any, anything, the, the the part of you that experiences that that baseline unfiltered reality is you, you can almost look at it like your soul and i'm just going to go ahead and say your soul because it works in this explanation better but <clears throat> so your body creates a we'll just call it a, a a rendered experience of all of your sensory inputs that would be your touch your sight your sound your smells and all, all of those things and so that's kind of pieced together and then by by your brain and then that is experienced and then your brain changes it and makes it your what you really think is going on which is not the du the non-dualistic sense and <clears throat> so the the no self is the core thing that experiences reality and that's about as far as I can go with that yeah um so there was a lot you said that I'd like to touch on. So I'll kind of rewind all the way back to the beginning of what you were sure. saying. That was with flow state. I thought it was definitely really important that you mentioned, you know, my experience with flow in that specific situation I gave is that it was triggered, right? But that wasn't necessarily a healthy you know, trigger. It just happened, you know, yeah. it happened that way. But <clears throat> like you said, you can set these conditions to allow flow states to happen. Right. You can't force a flow state because, like you said, if you go into it with the mindset, I'm going to try and go into this flow state. It's that very brain activity right there that's stopping you from entering into a flow state. So one of the ways that I actually enter flow states, and this doesn't happen all the time, but it, I have noticed it being pretty consistent, is I'll pretty much empty my brain, my thoughts or whatever, not necessarily intentionally like i'm not using my mind to think about emptying itself <laughs> this is not going to work it's that thought right there is keeping it off is keeping it active right so i simply like just you, be you have to as shift absolute. into it yeah you shift in you shift your awareness into it without using your mind and so <clears throat> i become when i'm in a flow state i'm in absolute pure presence and so like one of the ways that that happens is I close my eyes and I take a really deep breath and I feel the cold air rush through my nose into my chest. And I usually stick my hand out and feel the air or like if I'm around something like you, when I'm walking around like at stores or anywhere, I, it's, it's 
you know, kind of gross, but I put my hands over it. I, I touch everything as I'm walking by lockers, the wall, <laughs> coat hangers, and I feel all the different, you know, textures in the different um, air conditions and stuff. And I feel all of it. And then I start with like my fingertips and then I let it go up my arm and through my body. And then I feel the ground as I'm walking on it. And I'm just being aware of all of these senses. And then it like brings me in a flow state because now my mind is completely empty, but I'm not trying to make it empty. It just is based off of the conditions that I'm setting. And it's consumed by input rather than thought. Exactly. (laughs) So yeah, that, that was just something I'd like to add on to like my experience with flow state. Um, Well, one of the things, one of the things you hear is, is that, you know, take your shoes off and go outside and walk in the grass. Right. And it, it's to that effect. So I, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no worries. Um, and now to the, the things that you said about no self, I know I briefly mentioned this on the last episode, <clears throat> but I heard someone explain it kind of like this and I'm still having like troubles interpreting it and I might butcher the way I said it, but the way they said it was way better. So just bear with me. But when we use our brains to refer to ourselves, we have to refer to ourselves from a past moment. Like we can't, we can't refer to ourselves right now in the present moment because you can't, you can't grasp the present moment, right? It's when you think you have that present moment, it's gone. And the only thing you can do is just be present. You can be it, but you can't think about it. You can't talk it. Be, talk about it because when you're talking about it, thinking about it, trying to grab it, it's already passed. <laughs> you're now in the next one, right? So when you refer to yourself, you're referring to yourself as what your last moment was or, you know, it's in the past, right? And when you're thinking about past and future, it's all illusory or I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but you know, I mean, the past definitely did happen, but the past doesn't exist anymore because you're in the present moment, (laughs) you know, and the future, you know, obviously doesn't exist. It's not here yet. It'll be here and maybe in a few moments, but you know, we're not experiencing it. And then, like I said, we're not experiencing the past either, but we're still referring to ourselves from a past moment. And even Uh, one of the things I mentioned in the last episode was our bodies are constantly like evolving, right? We, we shed like what, 200 million cells a day. (laughs) Like nothing is permanent, not even God, Tao or whatever consciousness, everything is constantly evolving, constantly changing. So the, the person you're, you're referring to that being yourself from the, past is already evolved and changed it's not permanent so you're you're referring to something that essentially has already evolved and you can't say that like that's you now because me saying i am this that's what i was a few moments ago that's not what i am anymore and i can't exactly pinpoint what i am i can just feel what i am i can just be what i am right now that's the best way i can kind of explain it i guess so this is definitely interesting. One, one of the th- things that you touched on was the inability we have to refer to ourselves in a single, you know, the, the, the moment that would continue on because it's no longer the moment. And I, I had a, a really interesting thought, which was that, um, uh, a flow state then is essentially when you are experiencing that fluid moment and your brain doesn't stop to consider any particular moment. Yeah. Perfectly because the, so. well, and, and I'm going to probably mess it up now, but um, (laughs) when when we refer to a moment and we talk about it in this ever fleeting sense of a, of a thing that as you speak it, it's already leaving. What happens is I want to go to the smallest fragmented moment of time 
where that moment exists and say that that's that's the moment that's the one that's constantly moving and shifting and changing and that doesn't work in a non-dualistic consciousness because where is that moment right you think about where is the past it it exists in memory but that's the only way it exists because it's simply not here you can't point to the past and tell me that's where it's at so there is no uh basis in reality for the past and the same goes for the future and my cousin who i was just at his house like last weekend or the weekend before um just rattled off this hilarious quote that it is definitely applicable now because I was speaking about some of these things and, you know, he, he, he it really kind of took me by surprise because it, it was pretty, pretty damn hilarious. But he said he doesn't believe in art degree or uh, history degrees because there's no future in it. <laughs> and dude, I lost it. I, I, yeah, I lost it, dude. I was like, dude, that's, that's perfect. Oh, fuck. And yeah, you know, so, but the, uh, the ability to kind of sync your brain up and flow with that, whatever piece of that moment is the part that shifts and changes. That's probably a better way for me to state what a flow state is because it's kind of being linked to that and not taking any time to consider the, the before or after and allowing yourself to to flow with that single thing and that's a better way for me to conceptualize it now because before the way that i went about it was uh, a single train of thought and that became awareness matching the environment in that continuous train of thought and now it's very much more simpler than that because I can simply just think that it's an attachment to the ever fluid moment. And that works for me. I like that. Yeah, no, I love that too. That definitely. Well, you're the one that said it because it... Uh, you, you said it and I inferred <laughs> it and put words behind it, but you're, you're the one that said it. So kudos to you, man. Cause that was awesome. Oh, thanks. My ego loves that. Well, that's the, you know, <laughs> we can talk about that now. Yeah. No, no, no. We, we can talk like that now because we're, we're done with ego death and uh, <laughs> we don't, we don't have to consider that anymore um, because we just simply are. And, you know, I, I can be a person with an ego, right? But that has no bearing on me as a person. And yeah. Yeah, that, I think that's really important to mention, too. Like, I don't know if we did cover it on the last episode or not, but just because, you know, you experience an ego death doesn't mean that it's actually, like, gone and it's not going to come up in your day-to-day -day life at all. It's very much still there. It just has absolutely no influence over your behavior or your actions or even, like, your, your train of thought. You know, like, uh, the other day, what was it? I had someone at work just say something rude and immediately my ego came up and wanted to be defensive. And this time I, I realized that feeling literally coming up. It felt like it was like coming up my body into my head and I felt it and I caught it exactly as it was happening. And I was like, there's my ego. Hi, how are you? <laughs> you know, and then I look, you know, I was still looking at, you know, the person who said something and I just smiled and then walked away. But, you know, it still comes up. It's just natural to have that, right? Or at least I feel like it is. But ego death is when your consciousness and your awareness is taking away its power. And That's it's the way odd I like because, it. yeah, and, and it's odd because you don't even know that that's possible until you're faced with the reality that everything is connected and that your sense of individuality is not going to last. 
Oh, <clears throat> like the way I like to think of it is like, you know, when I was studying Taoism and just pretty much learning like Taoism is pretty much consciousness. It's just another word for it. Right. But learning that everything is just an expression of Tao. So like right. I'm an expression of Tao or consciousness or whatever you want to call it. You are, uh, other people are love and compassion are all expressions of Tao and learning that even though we're an expression of it, we still are, we are that, and that is everything. So the explanation I had for no self, I'm going to rephrase now because I have the words that I said earlier before we got on the air, which was the, uh, the, the life force, the, piece of us that is pure consciousness is the, the what we talk about when we say no self and to experience that as a uh what is it a, a stage of i am or, or whatever um basically to experience it is to uh kind of be in the middle of I am and unity. So it, it's, it, it's that part of you that, uh, see, I, I lost it again. I, we, we should have just went with the very first thing I said before I got on the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Um, you know, there, I feel like now that I, that I, I wasn't even thinking of it, actually, it just kind of came to me, but I feel like there was one time where I did experience a non-dual consciousness experience. And that was when I went to that cold plunge and we did like the meditation and everything. But we also, in that meditation, we did a sound bath. And it was such a wild experience. That was probably the deepest meditation I've ever been in, which was really weird for me because normally I meditate alone, but I was meditating in a group and we were outdoors and we had that sound bath going on. So I had my eyes closed and I just felt like there was a connection with all of my surroundings and I wasn't thinking about it. I was just feeling it. And then when they were doing the sounds and I was like hearing, you know, the sound, I wasn't like, I wasn't hearing the sound. I felt like those vibrations and everything, I was in flow with those sounds. So I wasn't thinking about what it sounds like or anything. I was just experiencing it. I was experiencing the feeling of being with other people and the, the warmth from the sun coming down on us and just feeling all of those feelings, but not labeling them as feelings and not labeling them as sounds. Does so, that make sense? yeah, absolutely. Um, there comes a time for me at least when I had to face the fact that everything that is my reality is uh, rendered to me by my own brain. So everything that I experience is a result of my sensory input, which is fed to my brain and my brain creates a, an, an image of experience that I then in turn experience. And that can be looked at in the, uh, so there's this concept of you can look yourself in the mirror and you can be the you that looks in the mirror. You can be the reflection that sees yourself looking into the mirror, but you can never be the mirror. And the mirror is the no self, right? It's that which reflects and that's no self. No, oh, very well said. So with that, do you, I feel like I've probably said everything I could about no self and non-dual consciousness. Do you have anything you feel like is worth adding on or mentioning that you didn't get to mention yet? Well, the only thing that I would add, I suppose, would be Once you uh, experience this baseline reality, 
don't let people try to convince you that it's something different because it took me a long time to get here. And now that I'm here, I'm, 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 I'm not leaving. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, th this is it. Um, not having attachment to the way I think things should be, um, now becomes what am I going to do to improve something or make something, you know, it, it's no longer things just suck, right? It's, well, what's really going on is I don't like this part of this situation. And now that I see things clearly, I can have a more direct path of how I want to improve or change something about my life. And that is the single biggest thing that, you know, seeing reality for what it is has taught me. And um, just being able to see things for what they are is valuable in that sense. So, yeah, I was, I was going to say, even to like add on to that, you know, seeing things clearly, like you have an initial reaction to a situation. And then once you see it for what it is without that filter, you may not even decide <laughs> it's worth trying to improve or anything. You might just be like, you know what? I can accept this for what it is. It is what it is. I, I don't even have a feeling towards it anymore. I initially did. I initially had a conditioned reaction, but being aware and being present right now, this is fine just as it is. I don't need to do anything. Or maybe I do. Maybe I am in a situation where someone or myself could possibly get hurt. Maybe something does need to happen, but you're a lot more clear. You're creating good karma or no karma which is pretty much one of the essential teachings in Buddha is getting rid of karma. Um, they, I know Buddhists believe in uh, like reincarnation and creating no karma. So that way you don't get stuck in the cycle of uh, samsara, which is life and birth. Mm -hmm. um, that was one thing I didn't contemplate any further on. I'm not sure if I follow that. Oh, but. Okay, so there's one thing I'll add. Um, um, th there's another implication that this baseline reality has for me, which is any, uh, you know, actual spiritual beliefs that I have, which would be things that, anything that doesn't involve the present moment, anything outside of that, I can spend time thinking about if I want to, but ultimately, you know, that's all hearsay. So things like reincarnation, past lives, uh, what happens when I die and things like that. I, I have, you know, my beliefs about that. However, I don't have to spend time thinking about any of that stuff anymore because or even hold an attachment to it. Right. Because <laughs> what good is it going to do me anyway? Um, you know, I'll just very briefly touch on uh, a supposed afterlife in which if there is one, my uh, admittance to that would be predicated on how I live the moments in my life. So why don't I just live the moments in my life? Right. Ooh, I love that. Yeah, that's so, awesome. <laughs> that that's yeah, where well, I'm at with that. Yeah, that's great. That's I, I that was very elo eloquently put. I love it. Um, with that, do you have anything else to add? I think we. Um, well, did we decide lot, what man. the next? Yeah, did we decide what the next mm -hmm. episode is going to be? Yeah, I think uh, we're coming closer to reality. Oh and, yeah, yeah. I think that would be a good one because. So we'll you know, be expanding after... on what you talked about, which is now that I see things for what they are. Yeah. So, I... you know, it's pretty much like you had your ego death. I We kind of jumped from ego death to 
<laughs> right into a non-dual consciousness, which is, you know, a next step after the I am or I am and non-dual non-dual consciousness are pretty much the same thing, right? No self, mm-hmm. but um and that's with the I am, you know, you you mentioned this last time, but you no longer are saying I am this, I am that, I am. Everything I after am I consciousness. am consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. So um it's pretty much after you have your ego death and how ha- after you've had your, you know, awakening or whatever you want to say, it's there's still work to be done, right? There's still knots to untie. You're just aware of what needs to be untied now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we're my plan is for the next episode is to share, you know, focus on this next week and be being as absolutely aware and present as I can be to learn from all of my external surroundings. If there's a situation that happens that I don't like, analyze it and come to baseline reality, see it for what what it is. And then realize, realize what was triggering that in my brain that made me not like this or what did make me like this. Mm -hmm. And doing that with like, say something falls on the ground or someone says something I don't like, someone cuts me off. Or if someone says something nice to me, I want to recognize all of that as best as I can, you know, and see how I can come closer to reality and see how I can do that by recognizing these triggers in myself. And, it's and so gonna I feel be like a, that's what I'm going to bring to the next episode is my experience with that. It's going to be a tricky thing because to think about it as it's happening pulls you away from the now, exactly. but that's where we're at. So that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's funny, you know, doing this podcast, it's almost like, yeah, it takes us out of being present almost, you know, so we're sitting here having to entertain these thoughts, which takes us out of what we're trying to practice. (laughs) I also had a thought that, you know, there is a very clear distinction of I'm a little more put together now that we're talking. Well, it's not even about what we're talking about. It's the fact that, you know, I, I came from that rigid dualistic mind frame to where we are now. And you literally got to watch me adjust into that. And I did. And it was beautiful. Well, I, I can go back and listen to it and, and cringe from episode one and then cringe less in, on this episode. So that that's mm-hmm. kind of cool. I, yeah. I like that. And that's why we do this podcast. I know probably <laughs> in a few years, we're literally going to look back at these episodes and we're going to be like, fuck, did we know so little? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but I'm, I'm not even going to touch that. that. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited for those years down the road and we're looking back like, wow, at least we were eager. <laughs> well, you know, that's, doing is a big deal no matter what it is so yeah can't progress unless we don't right no yeah all right so uh with that we'll go ahead and wrap up this episode so next week we're going to be discussing coming closer to reality things that we did or didn't do in this next week and maybe hopefully some helpful tips to help you guys come closer to your reality. So with that, Sean, I hope you have an amazing night and we will see you next time. Adios, everybody.